Good morning and welcome back to Pacesetter at Home. My name's Jules and during the last session I spoke about um, the feelings of joy and sadness and today we're going to be looking at fear and anger. Now both of these feelings can make us feel quite uncomfortable and can be quite unpleasant but like all feelings it's worth remembering that they can come and they can go and okay, hopefully we don't get stuck in any of those particular feelings. So we're going to talk about fear to begin with. Now, we often fear the unknown and new things. Okay, so for example, most of us pacesetter coaches were pretty fearful about doing these videos. Okay, because we haven't done them before and we're worried about how we would look and sound. Okay, we're so used to performing in front of you all in class or out on the sports fields, but this is something quite different. Okay, so what did we have to do to conquer our fear? So we had to find our brave, we had to step out of our comfort zone and really apply that growth mindset that I've already spoken about. So being brave, well what does that mean? So it can mean to face your fear and do it anyway, okay, you might just have to get on with it. Because sometimes you can't just say no, I'm not doing it. Just a bit like doing these videos, we had to do them, so it was a case of right, come on, just got to do it. Okay, it might mean that you've got to tell someone, talk to someone about how you're feeling and what you're worried about. Okay, sometimes just by doing that, you can realise, actually, it's not so bad after all. And lots of us have spoken to each other about doing these videos. I, for one, have videoed the, the computer more often than I've videoed my face because I haven't got the camera quite right. Now, that's quite funny now, but at the time I was feeling quite anxious and stressful about it all because I just couldn't seem to get anything to work properly. But just by talking to other people, you realise they've made the same mistakes and actually it's all it all turns out all right in the end. It might also mean sticking up for something or someone you believe in. It's worth remembering also that asking for help is not a sign of weakness, all right? So whatever you need, you just, you just ask. And um, quite often, our fear can go away, or it certainly can be alleviated slightly. So have a little task that you might like to do. So I've created a superhero. So it's all about finding your brave. Now, you may have done some of this in Children's Mental Health Week back in February. Um, now, I've obviously coloured mine in. And then around the sides of it, I have, I've put statements that link to being brave. And it might be that you want to use words like strong, courageous, funny, whatever works for you. So I've put face my fears and do it anyway. Breathe. So when we get fearful, we can get a bit panicky and we might start breathing a bit quick. Okay, so it's worth remembering those lovely yoga breathing that Claire and Claire have been teaching us. Okay, big deep breaths and that can help bring everything down. Okay, it could be that I ask myself, well, what am I afraid of? Um, and is it that bad? Um, speak to someone. Ask them if, um, if there's someone that can help me. Find out if there's someone that's done it before. And often, what that thing you're afraid of, actually it's not so bad. And it, or it, it might think, in your mind, you might think it's a huge thing to be worried about, but actually in, it can be quite small once you've spoken to somebody else. And also, if I tell myself that I can do it, okay, use that growth mindset. If you say straight away, I can't do that, I'm not doing it, it's going to make things a lot harder. So by saying, actually, I can do this. I might not like it. It might be difficult, but I can do it. Okay, so have a go creating your own superhero. Okay, so the last feeling I'm going to be discussing is about anger. Now, again, anger is a normal, healthy emotion that we all experience at one time or another. And it is okay to feel angry. Um, but it's how we control it, okay? Those uncomfortable, quite sometimes quite explosive feelings that we can get. It's about controlling those that's really key in this. Okay, we need to be able to recognise, first of all, what makes us angry. And sometimes we don't really know until the situation occurs. But we need to learn from that. Okay, but also there are some things that make us angry all the time, the same thing. Okay, but it's worth recognising what those things are and seeing if you can do something about it. We also need to recognise how anger makes our body feel. All right, it could be that we clench our fists, it could be that our jaw gets tense, our face gets red, we feel hot, we might start sweating, our heart starts beating faster. It might be that you just want to run away or you want to shout. Or it could be that you start behaving in a negative way. You might hit out um, or break something, for example. And these can have quite negative consequences. So this is where we need to try and apply Claire's spot it, stop it and swap it technique. So if we can start to spot 
are signs that our body's getting angry or spot the situation might make you feel angry, you can stop it. You can choose not to get involved or you can choose to try and um, perhaps try a breathing technique to bring those angry feelings down and then swap it. So go and do something else. So if you are starting to feel angry, um, maybe uh, run up and down those stairs, uh, do some star jumps or maybe do some colouring if you're somebody that needs to be calmed down. Um, or use your breathing, blow bubbles. Any of those things can help distract yourself from what it is that's making you angry. Okay, but sometimes that's quite tricky. I do want to point out that sometimes we can go from one to 10 really, really quickly, and um, it's hard to do that. So it is a case of working on it. Start recognizing those feelings. What are those triggers for you? And for everybody, they are going to be different. And as you do that, as you start to recognize what it is that makes you angry and how your body feels, you can start to take control of it rather than it controlling you. But it is a skill and it is something you have to work at. And sometimes you can help, you can get your, your adults at home to help you with that or even your teachers at school, okay? Um, like I say, talking about these things can always make things that little bit easier. So we have also got some activity sheets around um, anger that you can have a go at if you would like to. So we have our little anger monster and around it you can um, write down how your body feels and how you might behave um, around the anger monster. So it could be that here you put that I shout, um, you know, and I get really angry, I shout. Um, it might be that you stomp your feet. It might be that um, you get start getting funny in your tummy. It feels all those butterflies might happen. Okay, whatever it is for you. And remember that everybody is different. And so how you react might be different. Say maybe how your siblings react. So um, this one here is about how different situations make you feel. So you can colour it in. And this is not in colour. But for you, you might choose a colour for not angry, a different one for a little bit angry, and another one for very angry. So if someone teases you, how does that make you feel? If someone bumps into you, does that make you angry? Or if someone tells on you at school, perhaps, does that, or your siblings do at home, does that make you angry? Rate those things, because it can help you start to recognise how you feel and what things make you feel angry. Okay, so we have, over the last two sessions, been looking at happiness, sadness, fear and anger. And there are so, so many more that we could be discussing, but unfortunately we don't have enough time. But a fun thing you could do with your family is to think of all the letters in the alphabet, all 26 of them, and try and give every single one of them a feeling. So start with the letter A and then work your way all the way through the alphabet and see if you can put a feeling down for every single letter. Maybe do it around the dinner table and pass that piece of paper around and see if you can get all 26. It's quite a challenge. I'd love to hear from you if you've managed to do it. I hope you've enjoyed these sessions on feelings and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Many thanks. Bye-bye.